Hey guys, how's it going? Today I wanna to talk about raised beds. Some of the most commonly asked questions that we get about them, like what to build them out of, what kind of soil to use. I'm gonna gear this more toward beginner gardeners for those of you who are maybe trying to decide whether or not it's worth the effort to put in raised beds. I'm not gonna be installing anything or planting in them because we have several videos about that. I just wanna answer some of those common questions. The first question is why would you want to grow your garden in raised beds? And I think there are several answers depending on your situation. For me, the most important important thing is that I get to control the growing medium. So the soil that goes in my raised beds, I know exactly what's in it. And maybe you have a garden that does not have very good soil. You're having a really hard time growing things. Well, if you can either blend your own soil or buy a pre-blended mix to put in your beds, it's the perfect medium for growing your things. And then you know, like because whatever your vegetables and fruit are growing in, you know they're sucking in nutrients and things from that growing medium. And then you know what you're putting in your own body. And that's really important to me. Another really nice thing about raised beds is that you can get or build raised beds that are taller. So if you have back or knee problems, you can bring gardening up to a level that's comfortable and doable for you because gardening is a lot of work. It's a ton of up and down, I mean, planting, weeding, harvesting. It's just, it's a lot on your body. So if that's keeping you from gardening, putting in raised beds that are taller is really, really nice. And a couple of really nice benefits of raised beds is that they drain better because like I said, if you've got really bad soil, maybe it holds on to too much moisture. You put something like this up above that and the water has a much easier time draining out, keeping your plants happier and they're much easier to maintain in terms of weeds. They also enable a longer growing season because the soil in raised beds heats up a lot quicker in the spring, you get several more weeks of growing out of them than you would straight in the ground. And for me, this is kind of a purely aesthetic reason, but raised beds tend to make a garden look tidy. You can lay it out exactly how you want it to. I've got um, some custom beds that are in a um, L shape that I really love. It creates a centerpiece in my garden. And sometimes creating a space that's more tidy and pretty makes you want to spend more time in it. Question number two is what kind of wood should I use to build my raised beds? And you can honestly use pretty much anything that holds soil to create your raised beds. I do know that in terms of wood, the top two that I'm aware of choices are cedar and redwood. Uh, cedar and redwood are both highly rot resistant and they can withstand a lot of water and soil up next to them for a really long time. I've got some cedar raised beds from Gardener Supply back behind our uh, greenhouse that I stacked one on top of the other and made some really tall, nice raised beds back there. These right here are made out of two by 12 redwood and they've been in this garden space three or four years and they're doing really, really well. They start out, you know, of course the bright redwood color, but they quickly age and patina to kind of this light gray, which I actually prefer. Um, so I think both are really good choices. Now, I don't know all there is to know about wood. So there may be some other good choices of wood that last for a long time. Uh, you know, up against water and things like that. Um, but you could use other things. I mean, we've set up kits before. Like if maybe you're in a position where you wanna start gardening, but you don't wanna have to go get tools and build your own raised bed. Uh, we have put together like the veg pod. Last year we did that. It's a standing raised bed, heavy duty plastic. I think you can get multiple different sizes, but it even has like a greenhouse cover with a misting system. Like you can get really intense with it. We're also putting together this year, it's a two by four cedar patio planter. That one's also from Gardener Supply. We're gonna put that together for um, one of our family members that has just a balcony to garden on. Um, so I think that's perfect. Like there's all different kinds of things that you can use based on, well, style um, or your, your situation in terms of size and space, because you may not have, you know, a big sprawling area to put raised beds. Maybe you're just gardening on a patio, which I have done a lot of in the past. So there's lots of different kinds of kits or ideas out there to help you put together something that will fit your situation. And honestly, you could even use common board, pine, whatever free wood you can get your hands on so long as it hasn't been pressure treated or chemically treated. Some pallets have been chemically treated, so you want to be careful with those. Uh, but if you can get your hands on those kinds of things to build yourself raised beds, that's excellent. They may not last quite as long as a redwood or cedar, but they're definitely more cost effective. Question number three is what soil should I fill my raised beds with? And there are several several good answers depending on the scope of your project. If you are a beginner or if your project is small, I would just go with the pre-bagged raised bed mix. Espoma has got a good one. They're easy to move around. They are specifically blended for this application and you know your plants are gonna be happy in that. And I feel like if it's a small project, it's still cost effective to use bagged. And if you're a beginner, it's really important to use the right product and to keep it easy. Uh, that way, the more success you have, that first time that you're gardening, the more you'll wanna keep going. And it's just, it's so rewarding that way. Now, if your project is bigger, if you've got a 
lot of raised beds to fill, it's not quite as cost effective to use bagged. If you want to still do that, go for it. It is easier, in my opinion, to move bags around than to move bulk around. But what I would do is call around to local businesses that the type that sell like bulk mulch or gravel, compost, oftentimes they'll have a mixed raised bed mix. Ask them what's in it. Um, I have used both good, good ones and bad ones. We happened upon a really, really great one. Um, so I'll share the percentages of what our blend is. It's 56% premium topsoil, which is a soil that's not heavy. It's really lofty. It's also free of rocks and weed seeds. So it's a really clean soil. Then 34% cascade compost, which we have a forest called Cascade nearby. And it's basically just composted forest material. So leaves, branches, wood, things like that, that have been through the composting process and then 34% of the mix is made up of that. And then the last 10% is composted manure. And we've had that blend in these boxes for three or four years now, and it's been so great. My plants have done really well in it. It hasn't compacted, but it is important to continually add good stuff back in. So you can add in good uh, compost back in, like the land and sea. You can add in your own compost that you've made at home, which is great. I also add in a starter fertilizer, the Biotone, every time I plant a new crop. And it's just important because these are raised up kind of like containers, the more, more moisture that receive, the soil receives, rain, snow, or from sprinkling, it can leach out nutrients. So we just need to be mindful of adding those things back in to make our raised beds last really long and have a lot of success. What you don't want to use is some unknown source of soil. You, maybe your friends have a pile of soil sitting around because they had a house built or something and so they've got this pile just sitting there free for the taking. It's tempting because it's free but you don't know if there's noxious weed seeds in there or if it's ever been touched by chemicals and one of the major benefits of gardening and raised beds is that you know what's going into your food. Um, so using organic things I think is really important. Question number four is what kind of plant should I start with? with raised beds as a beginner. And honestly, you can plant anything you want in raised beds. I have strawberries in raised beds. I've planted corn, vine crops, zucchini, tomatoes, peppers. I mean, all of it, root crops. I do potatoes. In fact, I'm planting potatoes in mine today. Um, so you can pretty much plant anything you want. A couple of things you want to keep in mind is that you really want to plant heavy on the things that your family actually eats. And I know it's super tempting when you're standing in front of the seed racks or you're down at the greenhouse looking at all the fun plant starts, you want to try it all. It's a good idea just to add one or two new things into your garden every season and really plant heavy on everything that you'll actually utilize. Because I've done it before where I've gotten really excited and I've planted up my space with stuff that we don't really enjoy eating. And so a lot of the times I'm finding myself just giving it away and wishing that I had more corn or wishing that I had more bell peppers, something like that. You also want to make sure that you do not overcrowd your raised beds uh, because overcrowded plants are stressed plants and stressed plants are more susceptible to insects and diseases. So be mindful of that. The crops that I think are the easiest to start are radishes for one, especially if you've got kids. Radishes have a 20 to 25 day turnaround in harvest time. So you plant them from seed, you're harvesting in 20 to 25 days. That's almost instant gratification. Um, so I always love to put some radishes in my garden. I mean, beans and peas are really easy. Tomatoes and peppers, if you get those as plants, are really easy. Corn is great. Zucchinis, um, squash, carrots, beets. I mean, there's so lettuce and spinach. There's so many. Uh, it's just kind of creating a list and maybe start on the small side and just grow a few things first and then add to it every year. If you were a beginner, I probably wouldn't recommend melons. I have been gardening for a long time and I still have problems growing watermelon. Question number five is what kind of fertilizer should I be using? And I would definitely start with something organic because for food production, that's really important. And like I mentioned earlier, every time I plant a new crop, I work that Biotone starter fertilizer into the soil. It has mycorrhizae in it, which helps with root development and helps establish a plant quick and gets the root system nice and bulky. Uh, and then you can use garden tone or plant tone. They're really good, more all purpose fertilizers, but you can certainly go crazy. I mean, there's all different kinds that are specifically, like very specifically blended for specific crops. There's tomato tone, berry tone, citrus tone. So if that's something that really interests you and you wanna give that plant exactly the nutrients it needs, you can definitely go nuts with the type of fertilizer. But I would say biotone is a starter fertilizer when you're planting your crop and then a side dress of plant tone or garden tone like mid-season 
is a really good idea. And the last question, number six, is how do I water my raised beds? Couple of different ways to do that. There's drip irrigation and overhead water. Um, there are pros and cons to both of them. My personal recommendation is a drip system uh, because I feel like it's more efficient and it's better for the plants. We have done videos about it, so we will link our most recent drip irrigation video down below if that's something that interests you. But the pros of a drip system is that it's efficient, it's targeted watering, you can put the drip line right at the plant's root zone so you're not wasting water and most of the time plants don't want to have their leaves or their produce covered in water every day or every other day or however often, however often you're watering. The uh, cons to a drip system is you may not have water access really close by so it might be a little bit more difficult to set up. Um, it is a little more intensive in its setup, it requires more parts but once you have it in place uh, it's fairly easy to maintain and it's there. You know, you might have to swap parts out here and there um, every so often, but it's just so worth the effort, I think. Overhead watering for us is really something we can't do in a lot of applications because our water is so hard. Um, so what happens is the water rests on the leaves and it creates white deposits, hard water deposits, and then eventually the plants start to suffer and they die. Um, so we have to do targeted watering, except for our grass. Our grass is the only thing that receives overhead water and it seems to do okay because we're constantly cutting our grass. So all of the, they don't have a chance to really build up on the, the blades of the grass. Um, overhead watering, also you can lose a lot of it to evaporation when it's really hot outside and a lot of it will hit foliage and just roll off in opposite direction that their, than their roots are. It doesn't necessarily, if you're overhead watering, mean that it's going to make it to their root system like it does with the drip system. And the last thing I wanted to mention, it's not a question, it's just something that's I think very helpful, especially if you're kind of floundering and not knowing how to lay out your raised beds. Like you know what you wanna grow, but you don't know what space they need and how you should plant them exactly. We're gonna link a kitchen garden planner down below. I've showed it to you before. It's just super helpful. There's a whole bunch of pre-planned gardens you can choose from, or you can lay out your own based on the crops you wanna grow. But it shows you like in a three by six or four by eight or whatever size of bed you have, how you can effectively lay out your produce and I just I uh, have been gardening for a long time and I really enjoy using that tool so check that out in the comment section or the description of this video um, if you need help with that anyway that's it for this video I hope that this has been helpful maybe answering some of those questions you might have about raised beds I really do feel like raised beds uh, are a really good solution for so many different things and I think they're fun to grow in they're easy to grow in um, and I hope you guys give it a try thanks for watching this video and we will see you in the next one bye